Let's all sing it together. We'll not be defeated. We'll not be defeated. We'll not be defeated anymore. Jesus Christ, God's only son, fought the battle and he won. We'll not be defeated anymore. Everybody.
sin is the embodiment of satan himself it's not just sin wanting to have you the devil wants to have you that's the meaning the devil wants to swallow you eat you up the devil wants to finish you that's what that's the message coming out there and you must master it you are not supposed to lose to the devil you must master it god wants you to be the winner so there's at any point two people at your door one is knocking on the door and that's jesus he saying open the door of your heart i will come in and i will be your host you will lack nothing and i will be with you i will take care of you all your needs i'll be more than enough for you you will live the right kind of life you will have a right kind of future you will enjoy the blessings of god in every way in this life and in the life to come in a real way but there is another person knocking on your door crouching at the door he is desiring to have you and that is the devil that's the way the bible talks about in the earliest chapters and that is the devil in the form of sin and sinful rebellious nature crouching and if you give place to that and walk away from god and choose your own way rather than the way of god then that sin will have you and that sin will not build your life and make you happier that sin will remove every happiness every peace and all the good things from your life and leave you completely as a dead man or a dead woman because that is what sin can do but you know the devil always gives a good presentation you know outside that sinful life is good it's enjoyable see that's how they used they used to talk about it when i was young you know young kids used to don't worry da nobody sees you know everybody does it just enjoy yourself don't be uptight don't be so stiff just enjoy yourself you know people these religious people call it sin but this is just human beings nature and you need to enjoy some of these things you know have fun with this don't miss out on this fun when are you going to enjoy these things when you're old that's what they told me you know some of these fools <laughs> i thought they were so wise in those days <laughs> say when are you going to enjoy it think about it think about what you're missing wow what a nice thing you are missing what a pleasure you are missing don't worry nobody knows about it i won't tell anyone he'll be the first one to tell you know <laughs> you can bet on it i won't tell anyone but the truth is this see we are all deceived we pay our attention more to the pleasure that comes out of it and we forget everything about what it can do he says nobody will know it and we get deceived by it all right if we can do it without nobody knowing it then it will be good well if you do it without anybody knowing it still one person knows it that's the problem one person surely knows it that's you right that spoils the whole thing because you know it you can't sleep anymore because you know it you can't have a happy married life anymore because you know it you can't live in peace anymore because you know it you cannot have rest anymore because you know it you have to hang your head here after because you know it it bothers you so much because you know it your performance in your work is affected because you know it it affects you in every way i remember when i was in college they came and talked to us it was a big talk about you know because that philosophy that you can live your life loose and do whatever you want and and it doesn't really matter the religious people have made too much out of these things you know just forget about it have fun you know that kind of philosophy was very common in america particularly at that time and so they were trying to have people come and talk to us about it so i remember a couple of people came and talked and they said this these guys were in the field of medicine and psychology and all that psychiatry and so on and they're christians and they were dealing with these subjects and they were talking about life and how we need to live it morally and so on 
which is the which was the problem you know which, which people thought is not not such an important thing you know what does it matter you know after all you're having some fun that's the way the people looked at it and they gave a talk i'll never forget you know they said the people that are having problems marital problems today that doubt each other's integrity and faithfulness are people that are themselves morally not right lived an immoral life that is why they doubt their partners and usually they end up doubting their partners for the rest of their lives because they think they are like that they think the partner may also may be like that that's the logic it seems because they think they have done these things they think well he may have done that also she may have done that also you know how can you think that uh, your husband or wife are so innocent you know this is the kind of logic that goes into mind and once a person gets caught in that it's like a it's like a vicious cycle you know you never get out of it you're caught and you're spinned around with it and un- until you lose your mind lose your peace and lose your family and lose everything because suspicion becomes very big evil then you know that never lets you rest never lets you have peace never lets you have a real union of joy and peace and happiness they talked about that how life now the moral life now how you live it is so important if you don't live it right it affects you it has the potential to affect you for the rest of your life where you will never be able to solve it they said why that was scary the way they were talking about the giving statistics about it you know and showing how real it is to deal with that problem but if you lived a life that is morally right you know and kept away from doing wrong things how you will have a very happy healthy peaceful good marriage when you get into it later on it made sense to me completely you know we need more people talking about that than these fools giving us lectures you know it is because nobody says anything about that is in the church or in our schools and colleges these guys that become all of a sudden bishops you know i used to travel from here to thambaram to college it's a long ride you know oh my goodness you should hear some of these guys talk about things you know philosophize about them oh this is that die you know this is this die you know you don't know i know this you know listen to me and and full of nonsense you know <laughs> that is why it is better to come to church <laughs> you know it's less expensive than hospital <laughs> and mental institution <laughs> you can solve a lot of problems because when you come to church you find the real way of life the revelation of god is such the revelation concerning life human life god man sin how life ought to be lived is amazing in the bible in the earliest chapter of the after chapters of the bible the revelation of sin as the embodiment of satan himself wanting to tear us up and destroy us completely take us and literally eat us up and finish us is a description that is amazing <coughs> that you find in the earliest chapters of genesis all right go back to let's go back to this uh, verse that we're reading you should rule over it so two two people standing at your door one is the devil in the form of sin in the form of various temptations temptations are always there and we are all human beings we're always tempted you know but the question is are you going to yield to the temptation and go the way of cain or are you going to yield to god and give your life to god and open your heart to god and allow god to bring his power to help you to win against all of these things you must rule and the only way you're going to rule over the power of the devil is through the power of the holy spirit the power of jesus the power of salvation the power of new nature that is given to you by new birth and a relationship with god the christian life comes with the proper equipment to live that life 
Now you have a new potential in the Christian as a Christian life. Once you open your life life's door to God and allow him to rule and reign and open the door to the Holy Spirit to come and be your Lord and guide you and lead you. Now you have a new kind of potential, a potential to live the right kind of ways. It doesn't mean that that you're not going to be tempted anymore. It's going to mean that you are going to successfully counter all those temptations and live for God and succeed in this life. So now listen to this. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, verse 8, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up and Abel, his brother, uh, rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Now after all this talk that God gave, after God literally pleading with Cain, saying, hey, why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, you everything, everything is going to be all right. Be careful. Sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is to have you, but you must rule over it. And I'm here. I'm waiting on you. I want you to open your heart to me. I want, to put, I want you to put your faith in me. What are you going to do, Cain? Decide. Decide for the better, for your future. Decide. <clears throat> After hearing all this, it's like going into a church and, or to an evangelist meeting and hearing the most powerful message <laughs> about sin and Satan and about God and his goodness and walking out of there saying, well, we'll see it later on, you know. I'm going to just do whatever I want to do. <laughs> Cain was a typical chap like that, you know, he's, he's like that, you know, he just... God himself, like an evangelist, pleading with him, saying, don't open your door to the devil. Open your door to me. Have faith in me. Trust in me, God is saying. And he's shutting his door on God after God pleading with him and giving him a revelation about the sin crouching at that door waiting to nab him. He walks out of there and becomes a prey of the devil. Takes his brother to the fields and goes along with this desire that the devil has put within him to kill his brother. This evil desire to, to go and murder his brother yields to that emotion, that mentality, that mind, the mindset. Yields to that thought. The devil has captured his mind, his thought, his emotion. Goes out there after hearing God's word, God speaking to him walks out of there and sins, completely commits a murder. Can you believe that? Now, there's a lot of people that feel sorry for Cain, I found out among Christians. There has been times when people come and say to me, poor Cain, brother, made a mistake. Yeah, sure, he made a mistake, but God shouldn't have punished him so much. The whole picture they got out of this whole story is that God is a horrible, punishing God. That the first time you make a mistake, he's going to come out with a cricket bat, bat and knock your head off, you know, and kill you. But poor Cain, he's just a, just a human tempted in going his own way. Shouldn't God have given a chance to him? My Bible, I read it differently, I think. I read it and I see God has the most amazing, patient God, gracious God, God of goodness and mercy and loving kindness, giving him all the rope that he can give him, you know. Pleads with him. Didn't even go to Abel, he went to Cain only and concentrates on him to win him to himself. But he killed his brother Cain. Then the Lord said to Cain, Listen to this. Where is your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? See, he's full of rebellion. This rudeness in talking to God. Am I my brother's keeper? He says. And he said, what have you done? God says, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. See, now he finds out that having done this murder, he cannot escape. He cannot hide from God. He cannot hide the truth. He cannot... He cannot, you know, he thought nobody will know. He thought nobody's going to see. Now God knows. And God says, your brother's blood is crying to me out of the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, he says. Now listen to this. Which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. 
So there is a revelation of God's will first. That is how you must bring your offerings. How you must honor God. How must you have, must have the highest place for God in your life. And uh, you know, those kinds of things. The revelation of how to establish a relationship with God by honoring Him. God said, Him who honors me, I will honor you. And then there is a revelation about God's graciousness and goodness. Even when you make a mistake, even when you have done the wrong thing, God is reaching out to you. And then there is a revelation of sin granted by God. God is revealing the nature of sin and warning against falling to sin, becoming a prey to sin and opening your heart to sin, sinful thoughts and emotions, how it will destroy you and how it will ruin you. All of that is there. All of this is granted to them. To Cain. Says, you're cursed from the earth which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. Now he's got the biggest problem now. He is the tiller of the ground. He is a farmer. But farming is not going to work for him. No matter where he goes and tries to farm, it's not going to grow anything. Because the ground, when he looks at, see, he thinks he can kill his brother and go forget about it. You know, like one fellow said, well, I can kill him and go to jail for a few years and then it's history. You know, I'll just live happily ever after. No, Bible doesn't teach it like that. You live it with it forever, for all your life. You live with your guilt and with your sin and with your shame and with all the thing that pricks your heart all the time. All your life, that's the way sin works. Sin will never leave a person. You cannot run away from sin. You cannot put it back. You cannot remove it from your life. The only way to get rid of it is to come to God and confess it and Him wash your heart and your mind and your emotion, your thoughts with his precious blood and make you clean and make you whole supernaturally by the blood of Jesus. There is no other way to be made clean. There is no other way. If you think you can sin and then go and live in peace, it's not possible. That's what he thought. He thought it's over. Well, if God sees me and punishes me, it's going to be for a while and then after that everything is going to be all right. A lot of people say things like that, you know. Well, I can kill you, you know. At worst, maybe 10 years. Jail. But after that, I'll be free again. Well, you'll never be free again. That's the truth. Somebody must tell the truth. You'll never be free again. Everybody clapping your hands, if you can, with me, all right? Shalom